I'm Sandy. And together we make up the Trekking the Planet team. Well, our time in Asia is just coming to a close, and so we thought we'd use this time to just summarize our thoughts and feelings about what we've experienced while on this continent, the most populous continent. Uh, we traveled through uh, nine different countries yes. Yes. and uh, thousands of miles. Yes. So thousands maybe, of miles. Maybe you could uh, take us through, Sandy, sure. uh, just some of the highlights. So um, we just actually passed our five-month um, milestone on this journey. We're over 150 days now. And three of those five months, <clears throat> excuse me, have actually been in Asia. Mm -hmm. So we started way back at the end of March. I think it was March 28th. We were in the um, country of Indonesia on the island of Bali. And from there, we moved to Thailand and Singapore. That was all by a ship. We were still going from Australia to, um, Sid from Sydney to Singapore. And then once we got to Singapore, we continued overland through Malaysia, Thailand again, Laos, Nepal, Tibet and China, and then Kyrgyzstan, and then now we're here in Uzbekistan, or actually today in Bukhara, um, and we're filming this in um, the dining room of the hotel we're staying at. They were very gracious to let us film here. But we've got about 10 more days here in Uzbekistan, and then we'll be moving on. So just thinking over all those, those miles, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say were the highlight, highlight or highlights of, of that time? So the, one of the highlights for me was definitely Tibet. Um, we had been wanting to go there for some time. Um, it was really thrilling to finally get there, and seeing Everest Base Camp was a thrill. Um, we took a very rough dirt road to get there. We were cautioned by our guide that we would maybe not even see it because you only see it about 10 days a month. And we were just overjoyed when we got over that last pass to see it as clear as day. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then when we got, excuse me, fly, we got to Lhasa. We um, went to several monasteries, which were really neat too. And um, Potola Palace was especially mm -hmm. stunning. We saw many treasures, a lot of Buddhist um, antiquities, and it literally, I think some rooms actually almost moved me to tears. They were so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the people, fantastic as well. Very, very friendly. We saw lots of pilgrims. You'd smile at them. They'd sort of beam and smile back and greet you in Tibetan, and it was very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. heartwarming. How about you, Darren? I would say uh, Nepal did not disappoint. Mm -hmm. We had uh, taken a lot of time to, to plan that itinerary. Yes. We selected a 12-day trek in the area of Mustang, which uh, was only opened recently, uh, 1991, to, yes. to outsiders. Um, there was a former king mm -hmm. uh, who, who was the king up till 2008, and we got an opportunity to meet him yeah. and the lovely people that, that lived there. There's about 6,000 people in that upper Mustang mm -hmm. uh, protected area. Um, just felt like we were going back in time the, the whole time. And the, the scenery was yeah. otherworldly. Um, most of it was up over 3,000 uh, meters. Uh, there were 7,000 meter peaks all around us. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was just an amazing, amazing place. It was hard too. Yeah, that trek was very challenging. So, about, about 91 miles. Right. So speaking of challenges, so Darren, what kind of challenges have you had while we've been here? Well, we like to keep in close communication and up to date with what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we uh, use the internet to do that. And uh, the hotels that we've selected were almost always uh, had Wi-Fi for right, us or right. some sort of internet for us to use. And so that that's worked okay. Um, when we're not at a hotel, like we weren't in Asia a lot of times we're yes. out kind of in the in the wilderness uh, we used um, an unlocked phone and a SIM card and this is an example of one mm -hmm. we have an unlocked phone with us and we buy a SIM card from the country that that we're, we're staying at and uh, for a few dollars you can have a hundred megabytes worth of data so that's it, very surprising. Yeah, it lasts have, and lasts and lasts, it's amazing. It would have been a lot more expensive had we uh, continued to use our plans from home so um, that allowed us to mm -hmm. check email, make small changes to the website, and um, most definitely send out photos mm -hmm. um, every couple of days. Although I think in some cases you had to sort of resort to going some remote places to even get a signal, right? In some places we were in trouble getting signals. In some cases no signal for uh, several days in, in uh, Mustang, no signal at all, and that was pretty unusual. Mm -hmm. um, then in uh, Tibet, Tibet uh, it turns out uh, a lot of the sites, uh, YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook, were all blocked. Right. Even, blocked. Our, even our website. 
<laughs> Even our website was blocked. We were honored to have our... <laughs> yeah, we were honored to have our website blocked, blocked. yes. So um, that made it hard. In, in some cases, I had to go to the top of a sand dune. Yes. Uh, just well, recently this week just uh, to, to get a signal yes. so it, it's been a challenge and I think it's something that we've overcome and I think we sort of knew we would face that kind of thing and I think that we've we've persevered so far so yeah. um, I think that the challenges for me would probably be let's see um, weather bugs, <laughs> bugs <laughs> food some food things we've had some issues with food of course you can't go travel in Asia for three months without having some issues with food mm -hmm. Um, um, whether we've had here we've got over 100 degree temperatures we've had just today just today well in the last couple of days we've had freezing or below temperatures in Nepal and Kyrgyzstan mm. when we were out camping right and then we've had all kinds of leeches and bed bugs and mosquitoes and you name it we've had those bugs um, but this, nothing again, that stopped nothing us nothing that stopped us and it's all part of the experience <laughs> um, so no, I think it's been really fantastic, and um, Asia's a really interesting place, um, very diverse. When we think back at all the countries we've been to, and I think they're all very different, and it's been exciting to be here, and I think that it'll be great to move on to our next destination. Maybe uh, someone would worry about uh, us getting tired? No, I think I feel great. I think we've gone slow enough and, and planned the itinerary deliberately, so we have built in some time to go sightseeing, but we're not sightseeing every second, and we've got some time to just rest and relax, and mm. and if slow go to, I think, would you agree that mm -hmm. it's, that's been helpful? Yeah, usually about three nights, sometimes four nights, mm -hmm. and that gives us the opportunity to... In one place, yeah. Yeah, in one, each city, and go and do some sightseeing in the yes. morning or in the afternoon, and then we have some time just to relax. Yes, absolutely. So I think then that's it for Asia, so now we're on to... So what's next? What's next, yes. So next we're on to the continent of Europe. So we're here for, like I said, another week, 10 days, and then we're going off to Europe. And we'll be in Europe for about two and a half months. And just to give a little preview of where we'll be, we're going to be starting off in the Baltic states in um, Riga, Latvia. We'll be going there first. And then we'll be moving into Scandinavia. Mm. And the real highlight, I think, there will be our next trek. What's that, number five? That'll be trek number five. That's going to be up in Sweden in the Arctic Circle. What's that called again? That's called the Kungsleden, or the King's Trail. It's about 90, 100 miles, about 150 kilometers or so of self-supported, we carry everything type of trekking. But it's in a national park, a Lapland, pristine wilderness part of Europe, which is very unique, given how highly populated Europe is. One of the last wildernesses. Yes. So I think it'll be really, really neat to see that and experience that area. And I think another highlight we're looking forward to is when we get to Germany after mm -hmm. that, um, a few weeks after that, we'll be seeing our family, mm -hmm. some of our family, our daughters. and Lauren and Kristen. And my parents. Alan and Kathy. Will be um, coming to meet, meet us and stay a few days with us um, in Germany. So that'll be really nice as well. So if you want to learn more about where we're going in Europe, um, Scandinavia, Baltic states, um, also some Eastern Europe. Um, check our website out. We'll be putting a post out there with a little bit more detailed itinerary in the coming days. Right. Yeah, if you go to trekkingtheplanet.net slash friends, you can find out how to sign up for our newsletters. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way to keep up because you'll get a weekly digest of everything that we've yes. been doing. Yeah. And educators can sign up as well. It's summertime, so we know it's a little bit of a hiatus for those folks. But if you go to our website, trekkingtheplanet.net, backslash educators, then you can sign up as well. Right. So I think that's probably wraps that up. So thank you so much for following us, and uh, until next time, safe trekking. Bye.